making room for what matters. And I don't know about you, but I'm beyond excited when I see the Kyle Church. So I'm going to call us to attention. Good morning, Kyle Church. Morning. Come on. Good morning, Kyle Church. Morning. This is who we are. I'm like, I, I don't know how I see my name all the time. Every time I see the Kyle Church, it's like my name I am seeing. I hope you are getting excited because this is who we are, guys. Online, if you've been with us on the journey, you are the Kyle Church. And today it is my honor to share with you because we've been on this journey with mom to evolve to the fullness of the Kyle Church. Not a babe, not a thought, but now a person and the person of the Holy Spirit that is leading the troops forward. As the Kyle Church, we're called to manifest the Kyle glory. And this morning, I want to set our foundation. Mom has really been doing an awesome job. It's almost like you're telling the child as they're born who they are. You're reminding them whose they are. She's been setting us up, and we want to be ready for when the Spirit of the Lord speaks to the Kyle Church about our mandate and what we are called to do. I don't know how many of us have read Revelations, but when you go in Revelations, every church has to give an account. There will be an account for the Kyle Church. There will be an account for the glory that God has placed upon this church. And that church is you and I. And our mandate is wrapped up in Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise, shine. Like in the morning, you should be saying that. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon who? Upon you. And then further in Ephesians 5, he also says in Ephesians 5, 13 to 14, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. And then he says in verse 14, that's what the conference did for us this year. In verse 14, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So the person beside you, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, because when you arise, then Christ will give you light. When we walk in light, we don't stumble. When we walk in light, we know the way. Awake and arise. The Kyle Church has been awakened and we have arisen. And this morning, I want us to understand, Pastor has been really teaching us, and maybe you can show the slide as to what Kyle means. And I kept saying, week after week, she's doing this, and she's diligent in what she's doing. Because if you don't know who you are, you can't manifest what God wants to do through you. You can't manifest what you're going to become. And as a Kyle church, we're called to manifest the great glory. We're called to service. The Kyle glory is the power and great glory of Jesus Christ manifested through ordinary believers like you and me. And that's a definition we should all know. The Kyle glory is the power and great glory of Jesus Christ manifested through, through you and me. And Ephesians 1.18 says that I pray the eyes of your heart be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of the glorious inheritance in his holy people. The riches of that glory that is being seen in and through us. So as an army, we, we, we're, we have to be ready for a mission. So I know every morning I'm awakened to say I am called to manifest the power and great glory of Jesus Christ. Whether you're a child, whether you're a senior, every one of us is called to manifest that power and great glory. So I want us to say it because when you say it, you start to believe it, and then you become it. So we're going to say it. I am called to manifest the power and great glory 
of Jesus Christ. And then you're going to repeat again and say to the person beside you, you are called to manifest the power and great glory of Jesus Christ. That is our calling. When people ask you about Kyle Glory, you should be able to say, I am called to manifest the power and great glory of Jesus Christ. When you see me, you see the power of God. When you see me, you see the light of God. When you see me, you see the glory of God in fullness wherever he has called me. We have to know who we are to speak it. It's not just pretty on the stage to show Kyle Church. As that church, I'm called to manifest the power and great glory of Jesus Christ. That should come off our tongues like that. That is who we are. That's why we changed our name. To fulfill the hope of that calling. To fulfill what he has called us to. And today the message is simple. Vessel and vehicle to spread the glory. That's who we are. Vessels and vehicle to spread the glory. We spoke about the day of Pentecost last week with mom. And as I read through Acts 2, after the day of Pentecost, the apostles couldn't just sit there. The power, when the power of the Holy Spirit came upon them, it wasn't a sitting anointing. It was a going anointing. Because after the, they, they, they manifested and the fires and the winds came in that room, they got up and they went out into the streets to begin the work that the Holy Spirit had started. We're not called to sit, we're called to go. Vessels and vehicles for the glory of God. And today, that's the focus of the message. So number one, you have to go. You have to go. Let the glory of the Lord leave the temple. Let the glory of the Lord leave this place, 1224. Let the glory of the Lord leave your house wherever you are every morning. And go out into the streets and the marketplace. Ezekiel saw it in the vision. Ezekiel um, 13 verse 2. He says, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. And the earth shone with his glory. The glory has to leave the temple. And we are the temple, so the glory has to go when we go. It's not a, pastor keeps saying, it's not a building God is building up. It is each of us, you and me, in our respective calling. Because what we behold, we will become. If you behold his glory and you're in pursuit of his glory, you cannot help but overflow with glory. Moses pursued it. And look what he did to Pharaoh. The apostles, after they went through that time of the Holy Spirit coming, in Acts 2, 18 to 13, you will see what happened after 38 to, to 43, sorry. You will see what happened. Peter got up because Peter now got into its right place. Peter got up. And then he kept preaching. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Just like that, he's telling ordinary people, repent and be baptized. Because once your sins are forgiven, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. For all, all whom the Lord or God will call. That's the promise of the Holy Spirit. And then it continued. It says with many other words. Peter warned them and he pleaded with them. He said save yourselves from this corrupt generation. I know many persons I can talk to at work. And say save yourselves from this dark world we're in. Find Jesus the light. The truth the way the life. Find him. Save yourself because nobody else can save you. Nobody else is called savior. But Jesus Christ. But Peter went out and he shared the gospel of the glory of Christ. Today is not about a message with deep thoughts because we just need to get up and go. It's a message to mobilize us with the how. We know the what, which is to manifest his glory. But then how do we do this? Number one is to go. 
Then number two is to share the glory manifesting in your own life. Share what God is doing so others can hear. It is of no use when our testimonies are hidden. It is of no use when our mouths are closed. It is of no use when we don't let one person know that we went even to church on Sunday and we got a word in time. And I love some of us in the church. You know, Dr. Vicky is one of those. She will tell you for days what has happened. I'm telling you. But, but it's contagious because she cannot contain what God has already placed in her. And we have to get that fervor for the things of God. And, and even as I looked, you know, Acts 2, 42 to 43, it says, I'm talking about the apostles because the apostles are like you and I. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and then they had to go. They had to go to do great glory, miracles, signs, and wonders. And even as we share with each other each week, we're sharpening the glory vessels. Where it's almost like I see them being tuned in the spirit as I kept preparing. It says I'm tuning them up. I'm tuning them in. And I'm tuning them to go for my glory. When you get a car tuned up, you're getting it shaped up to move faster, to accelerate. When you tune in a station, everything is crystal clear what you hear. He says I'm tuning them up to go. Acts 2, 42 to 43 it spoke about the disciples and what they did, the apostles. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. I want you to be able to have that testimony. That everywhere you go, everyone, when you leave that room, the lingering of the light of God based on the signs, the miracles, and the wonders, will be behind you. As we devote ourselves to the glory of God, we can only be filled with more to spread the glory in our workplaces, at our schools, in our ministries, everywhere we go. I think about my own sphere of influence. I tell mom that I'm, I, we, we, we go on Kyle conversations and we speak about, you know, amazing glory, manifested glory. But I am so in awe of how God wants to give us those platforms and places to speak about his glory. Not one of us should not have an opportunity to speak about this great glory. Not one of us. Because everybody knows somebody. You know, at my work, this, it's especially in this last year, there's been an acceleration in where God has placed me. I'm, I, I'm now on a number of offices. I'm across borders, I say, without visa. You know, I'm across borders where I literally hear people who will find me out. My company is North American. And I, I'm in, Cana in the Canadian market. But people in the States, that's our, Mac Mac our, our, our company is Canada, is, is North America wide. But our company in the States, I got two calls from persons who are senior executives. They said we were in a room and your name was called. And I'd like you, I'm not, I'm not an executive like a VP or an SVP. I'm a senior manager in my role. The places that I was called to was only the execs of this great company for North America. I sat in that room and I smiled too because this was just one black lady among many different nations. And when you know to my story of where God has taken me from in Jamaica, I say, God, this has to be your glory. This is not me. This is your glory. And I'm, I'm special to him because I really am special, but not that special. You're just as special. But the audiences, I remember I had to be trying to catch up to let my bosses know where I'm going. Because they were calling me way before even my bosses understood the audiences and the platforms I was being asked to speak on. But in protocol, I had to say, I have to let you know just in case you see it on the North American brand. I'm, I'm, I'm catching up with the glory. That's what he wants us to do. I'm catching up with what he wants me to do. It's an acceleration when we call ourselves the Kyle Church. You cannot be the same. 
You know, I went in, the, there was one of the audiences that I had, and I remember one of the panel, they put me on, and they were talking about, you know, how do you keep people engaged? How do I continue to show for it? They call it light. They call me light. And I, I didn't tell them the Bible. They call me light at work. They said, how do you continue to show for it the light that you have, Sadine? When you come in a room, you radiate. And then they asked me a question. They said, what is it that keeps you grounded? I never had to think. I never had to stop. I said, it's my faith in Jesus Christ. This is on a public platform. Because I'm not apologizing for the faith and the glory that God has given me. They asked me to speak. They can't take the mic from me. Because it's virtual anyway. But I'm not apologizing. I said, what keeps me grounded is not any motivation external. It is the source, which is Jesus Christ. I said, I'm a woman of faith. And my faith in Jesus Christ because I'm a Christian. And then I smiled. And then they asked me a further question to say, give them a quote. Give them a quote, a famous quote. My quote comes from the Bible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No, I'm not joking, guys. We can do this. The power and great glory. I'm not quoting Martin Luther. I'm not quoting Nelson Mandela. I'm quoting the word of the living God. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is my quote. Go find the source. And out of that one, one opportunity, you should see how the chat became ablaze with Christians putting all kinds of quotes of the Bible. The chat became ablaze. People just need each of us to go. Each of us to be bold enough. The apostles did not sit. They got up. They didn't wait to get it all right. The Holy Spirit came already. Just go. He knows the way. He will lead the way. And then we just follow in line. So that's number two. To share the glory. And it doesn't have to be a big public platform. It can be at Tim Hortons. I share every time I go into any Tim Hortons. I don't need a platform. I just need a person. One person that I can share the glory with. Yesterday we, we had you know, the farewell service for someone. I did the message. It was simple. Out of that I had two persons come to me. They go, where's your church? So I says, or Kyle church. And guys, you have to be ready. You have to have your tools. I had my little Kyle cards. I carried them in my pocket. I carried them in my purse. I was, I was able to give him and I told him, these are the pillars we stand on. And then I also told him, this is the address of the church. Find us. Every opportunity to show forth the power and great glory of Jesus Christ that is inside of you and me. Every opportunity. And then not only did the apostles went out and spoke and did miracle signs and wonders. It was also that they prayed for boldness because it wasn't that they weren't going to be persecuted. And I want to be real with us. There are many times in my company that people will say stuff and you have to know the grace of God that is on your life. I don't have time for foolishness. So what I usually do, I just say, that's okay. And I move right on because you're not going to stop what God has to flow. And it is okay. Like the apostles when they went out in Acts and I want us to read what they did after they went out in Acts. Not only did they go, not only did they share, but they prayed for boldness and strength. And especially now, we want boldness and strength to shine in the darkness. Especially now when we are persecuted as Christians, there's just no two ways about it. There is persecution and there's a silencing that is trying to, to occur. You must pray for boldness and strength to show forth his glory. Because Isaiah 60 tells us, not only does he tell us that, that our mandate is to show the glory, but it tells us what we're showing the glory against. It says 60 verse 3, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Peter had to pray because the threats came when they went out. When the apostles went out, the threats came. They wanted to shut them down. 
They wanted to silence them. And sometimes even in, our, in organizations or even in social settings, they want to silence you because the darkness is so loud. I don't know about you. Sometimes I feel the darkness and I hear it. It is loud. But the glory is greater. And so we have to shine brighter. And not only did Peter, so Acts 4, 29 to 33. I want us to see the example of how Peter prayed. Peter prayer is an example that you can use. Like I just used it this morning again. I said, God, give me that boldness. Now Peter prayed. He said, now Lord, consider their threats. And enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. We don't need a long prayer. Peter says, now Lord. And even the King James Version says, look. He wants God to see. Look upon their threats. And grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. May that be our prayer. Now, Lord, as I go out into the world every day, look upon what's happening around us and enable me, your servant, to speak your word with great boldness. And with that, fear must dissipate. With that, doors must be open. As the Kyle Church, we will not be silenced in fear of the darkness. Light overcomes darkness. And the only way the glory will be spread, it's through us. We have to say it. We have to be it. We have to show it. We have to share it. So even now, I want us even to stand like, as, 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 a, as a congregation, as a Kyle church. Let us stand. And online, you can stand with me. I want us to stand. Keep that prayer up there. Because I want us to ensure whatever it is. Because sometimes some of us are even persecuted at work. We're persecuted at schools. Because I know even working with the youth, sometimes they'll tell you, you know, they can't talk about the, some of the perversions and the stuff that's happening in the school. They can't talk against it. So most times they just be quiet. But we want to pray for a holy boldness. Every single area where you are at, you know where you're at. We want to pray for a holy boldness. A boldness that will come over us. So together let us read it. Now, Lord... Consider their threats and enable your servant to speak your word with great boldness. Let's do it again. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servant to speak with great boldness. Guys, you have to be empowered. Some of us go into some places, it's like a war zone. Before you go in, that is about two sentences of prayer. Or maybe one, it's one sentence. It's just one sentence of prayer. As you go out, now Lord, consider what's before me. Enable your servant to speak your word with great boldness. As I take on what's before me. As I take on the challenge of today. As I take on the enemies of today. As I take on those who would want to silence me. Now, Lord, consider that. And I'm telling you, when you call that, your angel armies come into amazing power. You may be seated. So we not only go, we not only share, but we also pray for the boldness and the strength of God. Today, I just want to sharpen us with the how. It's the how. Because it's good to know what you're supposed to do, but it's no good if you don't know how. You've got to know the how. So as we continue to look at what God does, not only to speak your word with great boldness, part of that prayer is to know what the power of the word does. The word of God is truth that is sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God cut through the enemy's lies. The word of God cut through deception. The word of God, he says in Ephesians 6, take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is your sword. We go forth with our swords. And then when the truth of God comes, it has to penetrate heart. It has to decimate lies. 
It has to push back the darkness. You don't have to worry about the work. Just speak the word and let the truth do the work. And then number four is to walk in unity. How to spread the glory of God as a vessel and vehicle is to walk in unity. And we've been hearing that a lot. And again, the Holy Spirit rested it on me. He says, when people are walking together and their steps are in line, it is the most beautiful synchronization you will ever see. Sync, we're walking in sync. And I love watching people walking because when people start to move in the same stride, it is the most beautiful thing. And that's the stride of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to walk out of line. I don't want to walk ahead of him. I don't want to lag behind him. I want to walk in step with him. That's what we want to walk with. The walking in unity. And throughout the conference, they kept speaking about that. Because not only does unity command blessings, but there is power and there is peace for the full manifestation of the glory. And that's why at the beginning I wanted us to have oneness, to understand what, what it is. The power and great glory being manifested in you and I. Paul speaks about this unity in Ephesians 4, 1 to 3. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring. Notice it says endeavor. It means to try. Trying at all cost to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. That's Ephesians 4, 1 to 3 as you find it in your own word. When we're walking in unity, we can experience the bond of peace. When we're walking in oneness... We can do and see what Jesus said in John 17. Ephesians 4, 4 to 6 also speaks about this oneness. I just had to underline every one, every time God said one again in this scripture. It says there is one body. Find Ephesians 4, 4 to 6, please. I want us to see it because oneness is important to God. I can't walk with you if you're walking ahead of me. That means I'm trying to catch up with you. I can't walk with you if... You, you are lagging behind me because that means I have to keep looking back and I don't want to look back. I want to look forward. But there's a unity and a oneness that God is calling us to in Ephesians 4, 4 to 6. It says there is one body. And I want you to see how many times God says one. There is one body. And every part of that body is connected. One spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called one Lord, there is one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Oneness. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in, one hope of your calling, the Kyle glory, one Lord. One faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. The oneness of God. The oneness that Jesus spoke about in John 17 that was so intimate. The whole of John 17 is written in red because it's like Jesus just talking to his father. There's no black when you look at John 17. It's all written in red. I don't know if that's still a thing, but yeah, it means that Jesus is talking. It's written in red. When you read John 17, John 17, 21 to 22, it says that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. You can use the NKJV version, please. That the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as you, just as we are one. We're going to read that again. John 17, 21 to 22. You have to understand what, where God has taken us as a church, where God has taken us as a people, where God has taken us 
in tune and in oneness with the Holy Spirit. It says that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me. And I can't even imagine Jesus talking to God like this. And I in you. The intimacy is, is, is palpable. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. He's saying the oneness that you and I have, that's how the world will believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. That they may be one just as we are one. There is synergy in oneness. There is power in oneness. There is blessings in oneness. There is unity in oneness. There is mobility in oneness. The oneness that I want to walk with the Holy Spirit. Where he lead, I follow. Where he goes, I go. When he stops, I stop. When he says, be still, I'm still. There's a oneness in this Kyle Glory movement that we're all being called to. It's not enough to walk behind and say, let them go ahead. Remember what happened to the Israelites, those who were behind God just took them out. It's not enough to run ahead because like Peter, you will say things before it happened and then it happens. But it's important to walk in step. So today I'm encouraging you. Even that, recommit to the Holy Spirit. I don't want to go ahead of you. I don't want to lag behind you. I want to be in total tuned with you. Because then there's clarity about the work he's called us to. There's clarity about when he says to go or not to go. There's a clarity that comes. And there's a oneness he's calling us to. Even as a church, we're seeing that in the generations working together. There's a oneness as we start to work more collectively together. There's a oneness with the youth and children. There's a oneness with the adults. When you saw this conference, there was a oneness. There's a oneness in the messages that were laid out before us. There's a oneness like Jesus did with his father. And he says that they may be one just as we are one. Today, let that be your prayer that you're praying for that oneness. And then the last one is to synergize with the heavenly host. So we said to go, we said to share, we said to pray for boldness, we said to walk in unity and oneness, and number five is to synergize with the heavenly host. And mom spoke last week about synergy. And it's, it's, it's important to hear a word and then to go back to study it. Because it, I saw the analogy and I saw the compounding but I wanted to know more about synergy and what happens with synergy. And the basic definition says it's the interaction or cooperation of two or more agents to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. I'm going to say that again. The basic definition is for synergy, it's the interaction or cooperation of two or more agents to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. So just say to someone, that's what I'm talking about because when I synergize with Carl, it should be a greater effect. That combined effect versus just sitting doing it by myself. Because even just the basis of Carl making it easy for me and flow by holding my Bible and bringing that up, I could concentrate on walking. There's a greater effect that I don't fall because I'm carrying too many things. The synergy is a combined effect that is greater than the sum of their separate effects. You can go far, but when you go with others, with the compounding of that, you will go further. It's a furthering we want to go. Not just to go far. Because sometimes we'll go far and weary, but you want to go further and continue accelerating. And Jesus called this. Ezekiel saw this. And we, we, we pa pastor did this years ago in, our, uh, in one of the fasting and prayer that we had as a church for those online. She spoke about the wheel within the wheel. I didn't get it then. 
But the synergy with the heavenly host is the wheel within the wheel. The synergy with the heavenly host is the wheel within the wheel. Ezekiel called this the wheel within the wheel. It's the intersecting of the wheels. He saw it in a vision. How God's glory would spread is the wheel within the wheels with the angelic host. Doing the work that we can't penetrate on earth. Through the synergy of ordinary believers and the angelic host of heaven. Then we will fully flood the earth with his glory. So let's look at Ezekiel 10, 9 to 11 as we finish out this last one. And 16 to 17. And I want us to see it because sometimes we get a word way ahead. But when God brings the fullness of it. Because of the fullness of time. It says, I looked and I saw beside the cherubim. And cherubim, we know they say are the little angels. You know, beside the cherubim, four wheels. And God is even exact. So we don't even say it's a three-wheel car. Four wheels. One beside each of the cherubim. And I want us to see this. If there is four wheels, one beside each of the cherubim. I literally saw this in the spirit. It's almost you have an angel by every wheel. And when angels come, they come in host. They don't come just alone unless God sends them on a specific assignment. So by every wheel, one beside each of the cherubim. And it said the wheel sparkled like chrysolite. And find NKJV because I use that version um, quite a bit um, for this. And not only in K NKJV, it says... The wheels appeared to have the color of a beryl stone. So it says, when I looked, there were four wheels. And God is not even going to be too scientific because every car, if you have a car, they should have four wheels. Because if they have three, you've got a problem. So there are four wheels. He's so specific. So we can really get the analogy as to what he's saying to us. And then not only does it have four wheels, but it has a cherubim beside each wheel. Sometimes we're not using the angelic host that's assigned to you. We haven't even called them into motion. They're just saying, tell me what to do. And beside the wheels, it says they also appear to have the color of a beryl stone. And I couldn't rest. I saw a beryl stone and I'm like, God, what is this? I couldn't rest. I had to look it up. A beryl stone is a precious gemstone. It's blue green color. It says, it is formed and become deeper and richer in color when the impurities hit it. And with that, they say, it's, the color only becomes more radiant. Because as seemingly the impurities come, a new color is formed out of it. Because it will not lose the essence of the stone. And then it also says, it's a stone that overcome impurities and obstacles and become radiant. It is a stone that holds lights and provide energy. So the burial stone that God is calling us to is that as we continue to overcome whatever impurities, whatever obstacles, we're going to become more radiant for his glory. That's why Ezekiel saw the glory shining in radiance. Everything in God's word is for reason. So even when you, if any of you have a burial stone, you should show me, but I, you know, I looked at it online. But it's, it's important to see. That the impurities didn't make it discolored, but it made it color shine brighter. The threats and the persecution shouldn't make us cower. It should make us go forward in courage more stronger. There is something he's calling us to. So even the descriptor of the wheel that had the appearance of a burial stone. And then he said, and when I looked, there were four wheels by the cherubim. Yep, you can continue. And when I looked, there were four wheels by the cherubim, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by each other cherub. The wheels appeared to have the color of a beryl stone. Next verse. As for their appearance, all four looked alike. As it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Oneness. All four looked the same. No angel, no wheel was trying to be its own thing. All four looked the same. The wheel within the wheel. And then continue. When you continue, it says, when they went, they went toward any of, the four, of their four directions. And notice, they went towards any of their four directions. The north, south, east, west. Anywhere God sends us, that's where the wheels were going. 
They did not turn aside when they went. Sometimes we want to do our own assignment. But when your eyes is focused on where God has called you, and then it also said, but it followed in the direction the head was facing. When the wheels went, they went to, towards any of their four directions. They did not turn aside when they went, but followed in the direction the head was facing. And then it closed it and said they did not turn aside when they went. The wheels was in sync with what the Holy Spirit wanted to do. The wheels was in sync with what the angelic host was assigned to do. And I know it has depth to it because I had to say to God, do, what, what are you saying to me here? But there's a synergy when you intersect with the angelic host and you're the wheel within their wheel. There's a velocity that they move with that you can't move with just your mere feet. They have wings. They move faster than you and I. But the intersection of the wheel within the wheel is what God is calling us to, to spread the glory as his vessel and vehicle. And I want us to, to, to get it. Because the synergy, that's the synergy. The wheel within the wheel. I don't want to be a wheel that's just spinning. And then verse 16 to 17, you know, further reinforces it. It says, when the cherubim went, the wheels went beside them. When the cherubim lifted their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also did not turn from beside them. And then it continued in verse 17. When the cherubim stood still, the wheels stood still. And when one was lifted up, the other lifted itself up. For the spirit of the living creature was in them, the wheel within the wheel. We've got to understand the movement of God in this season. There's a movement. We call it the Kyle Glory movement. But wheels is one of the greatest things for us to see how things move. And God says, when the cherubim stood still, that's, what I, that's my prayer now. The wheel stood still. Because the cherubim is the bigger wheel outside of your wheel. You're the intersecting wheel in the middle of it. And when one was lifted up, the other lifted itself up. For the spirit of the living creature was in them. The spirit of the glory of God is in you. Let your wheel intersect with the wheel of the angelic host. Let your wheel intersect with what God is doing. So that the greater effect of the power and great glory will be seen. Because where there's synergy, that again is unity. And we have to see the power and great glory of God in these dark times. As we synergize with the angelic host, he doesn't just say that as I close. He says, when this happens, then the vessel and vehicle of his church will be in full motion. Like he said to Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And then he tells us how to build his church. Matthew 16, 19. It says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. He's given us the keys of the kingdom to bind and loose his glory. Now is the time to synergize. Now is the time, Kyle Army, to share and show and go. Now is the time to arise. We're called as a Kyle church. And I'm going back to where I started. What are we called to do? To manifest the power and great glory of Jesus Christ. What are we called to do? To manifest the power and great glory of Jesus Christ. In us to ordinary believers. Today, that is the simplicity of the message. But each of you are not only his vessel, because sometimes vessels, we contain stuff and we don't really release it. We don't pour it out. But we're also his vehicle. We're also his vehicle, so we have to go out. 
We're like the apostles. We're like Ezekiel. So today, Eve, when I want us just to stand before it as the praise team comes back, because I want you to, to make a fresh faith commitment, a fresh statement and declaration to God that I am a Kyle Glory ambassador. I am the Kyle Church. This is not for the faint of heart. This is for the army of God. But I know that when God calls us to account in, like he does the churches in Revelations, we must be able to say what we have done as the Kyle Church, manifesting his glory. Right where you are, I want you to see the freshness of the Spirit of God. It says the Spirit was in every living creature. It was in every living creature. And even today, many of you, as you drive, even if you're on a bus and as the bus driver drives, see that wheel within the wheel. See that wheel in motion. The movement of the glory. It is of no use if the wheel is static. It is of no use if, or if, if we've just been sitting. And there's a oneness that God is calling us to. So even now, I want to just say, God, I commit to walk in oneness. I commit to walk in oneness. Not turning aside. It kept telling you they didn't turn aside. They went in the direction the head was facing. Because then when you turn aside, you break up the unity. You break what God wants to keep as a full cord. Father, we commit to walk in oneness. And then in your own words, I want you to pray for more boldness. And even if you have not been bold, just pray to be bold. Because today after, we're going to seal it with communion. But I'm encouraging you, not only be a vessel of his glory, but be a vehicle to move his glory. So that Habakkuk 2.14 can be seen. That the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the water covers the seas.